So, ladies and gentlemen, this is a function. A function we are familiar with. This is f of x equals x squared, correct? And we can know it is a function based on one of the things that we learned was using the vertical, well, at least we can know the graph is a function, um, is based on using the vertical line test, right? Because if you were to test to see if it's a function, by creating a vertical line, as long as a function, when you create a vertical line, it can only cross the function once, right? That's saying there's only one x value for every y value, correct? OK. Um, then what we later learned was that the, um, the inverse of this function. Now, when we look at the graph, we have an issue. Because if you guys remember, when we were talking about inverses of functions, um, does anybody remember what the test was to determine if something was an inverse of a function? The horizontal line test, right? And if we see this graph, it does not pass the horizontal line test. Or I'm sorry, not if it's a function, but if the inverse is a function. This does not pass the horizontal line test. So the way that we um, can show that is by reflecting. I wanted to use a different color. Why? Use a crystal. The reason why I got it was that a blue? Yeah. It is a blue. So to graph the inverse, just as a quick little review for you, to graph the inverse, you need to reflect about the y equals x line. That blue line is the y equals x line. Okay? So if I was going to graph, the, if I was going to reflect this about the y equals x line, you guys don't need to be so concerned about this. But that's what the graph would look like. And that horizontal line test, when reflected, now turns into the vertical line test. So you guys can see that the inverse, the inverse is not a function. Correct? Yeah. You guys agree with me? Yeah. OK. Now, if you guys remember, we also talked about how to find the inverse of a function. So if I was given f of x, if you guys remember the process, what we did was we set f of x equal to y, right? Then we swapped the variables. Then we solved for x, correct? And so what we had we was, for I'm sorry, solve for y. Uh, sorry. OK. So and what we found out is that's what the graph would look like. Square root plus or minus the square root of x looks like that. That's the inverse. That's not a function, though, correct? Now. There is a way, though, I can make that inverse a function. The way that I can make the inverse a function is by creating a restriction. So if I want to say that I'm going to use f inverse of x, what I can now say is if I want my inverse to be a function, I can say f inverse of x when um, uh, b -b -b absolute value of x when I am looking for, that's not going to be negative. When I'm looking for, what did I forget? Everything. No. What are they going to write? Huh? Um, so I'm trying to see. I'm trying to relate this to what you guys are going to know. Um, so all I want you guys to understand is if I'm just dealing with the positive instead of the negative of my constraint, what that means is, even though this is still part of it, but if I restrict this to only to the positive, 
if I kind of make that dashed so it's no longer part of my restriction, see my restriction? Instead of doing plus and minus, I'm making my restriction. I only want to do the inverse when it's positive. If I only do the inverse when the square root of x for the positive square root of x, I'm only going to graph this portion of it. Yes, but yeah, I'm just saying I just want to graph the square, the positive um, when the square root of x, because this would be the negative. I'm only graphing the positive version of this. I'll explain a little bit more. But all I want you guys to really understand from this is, first of all, the direct inverse is not a function, right? I can make it a function, though, if I only look at part of the graph, correct? The part of the inverse that I'm going to choose to look at is only the positive square root of x. Does that make sense? So what I'm all I want you guys to take away from this is inverses, not all inverses, not all inverses of functions are functions. That's why we use the horizontal line test, correct? However, if we create a restriction, then we can have the inverse be a function. Okay? And we're going to talk about restrictions a little bit further. But this was at least a little bit of a review from your previous.